welcome to my sewing room. We have such an exciting show for you today. We're going to learn a lot of new heirloom techniques. Let me share with you this beautiful table runner which has all of the techniques that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Over here on the far, where my fingers are, there is a beautiful yellow Magic Madeira border. It's a wonderful technique and it's really very easy. That goes all the way around the outside edge of this beautiful table runner. Next, we have lace shaping, which will be another one of the techniques I'm going to share with you a little bit later. It's really very easy. You see that little, almost little peekaboo place that has organdy in the middle and some machine embroidery? That is organdy Madeira window paint, and it looks so hard, but it really is not. Now then, the yellow piece in the middle is a Madeira motif, the yellow linen in the middle, which it also has absolutely wonderful machine embroidery on it. All of those techniques we're going to cover. Let me share with you some other garments that have some of these techniques. This magnificent Jack and Jill dress has the Madeira, Magic Madeira borders. It has, well, it doesn't really have an organdy window pane. It has a lace window pane, but it's somewhat the same technique. On the bottom is another one of the beautiful Madeira borders. This time it's done in blue, and it's done all the way around the skirt, and it actually has some of those lace, uh, lace insets also, which look very much like the organdy Madeira window pane. This is a beautiful little day gown, little blue day gown, which on the bottom of this day gown, and at the top also, you're going to see some beautiful lace shaping. It has the diamond, which includes a miter with a little bit of feather stitch around it, and right down at the bottom, there is also another really, really sweet lace shaping, which includes the diamonds. Let me just share with you the uh, collar on this dress. This actually has the Madeira right here in the middle and on each side. This actually has the organdy Madeira window pane technique with just a tiny little bit of machine embroidery inside. Next, won't you come along with me and I'll share with you how easy it is to do lace shaping. Lace shaping is always so much fun to do. In this particular lace shape on this beautiful table runner, we have a miter and a little tiny bit of curving, and then this was, really isn't lace shaping at all. It just one piece goes over the other. But now let me just share with you how easy it is to shape lace. All right, I've already started the lace shaping here, and by the way, when you shape lace, you stick pins into a board. It's kind of a whole lot of fun, as a matter of fact, and it's really very easy. All right. I'm going to come around the corner a little bit here. I'm coming up to the point on this shape. Let me pull a few pins over here. Now when I come to a miter, I'm going to put a pin on the outside and I'm also going to put a pin on the inside. Now I'm going to fold the lace tail back on itself. Can you see how I folded that there? Then I'm going to remove the inside pin and I'm going to bring it around and look, a perfect miter is folded in right here after I've pinned one side and then pinned the other side. Now when I come on around, I can put the pins on down. When I come into the miter, I put a pin on the outside, a pin on the inside, fold the tail of the lace back on itself, then remove the inside pin and bring it down and another perfect miter is folded in. And that is just how easy it is to make mitered lace. All right, as you can see, I've got a finished piece right here, which shows how the lace has been stitched down. I'm going to use a wing needle stitch to stitch the lace. Let me just come over here and stitch a little bit after I've already shaped my lace. And by the way, I'm using a wing needle. I'm using a Madeira applique stitch or a pin stitch. I'm also, I also have stabilizer, tearaway stabilizer underneath my lace. I already have the piece of lace shaped and I can go just as fast as I want to. I'm putting the, the center of the foot right along the, uh, the center of the border of the lace. That's called the heading of the lace. Those little strings that run up and down the lace. I'm going to come all the way up, and now can you see how I've got a pin stitch with a wing needle back there? I have it set on 3.0 and 2.5, and now then after I had stitched it down, it's made a beautiful little hole, 
And let me share with you one more last trick when I do lace shaping. You can see my finished piece here that I already have stitched down. I have cut the fabric from behind the lace. You see there to make it peekaboo. I trim the fabric from behind the lace and then on these miters right here and right here and right here, I come back in with my thread and do, remove the wing needle, just a regular needle, and simply do a zigzag over, over this miter, over this miter, and over this miter. And that is how easy it is to do lace shaping when you're working with the miter. Next, I want to share with you how to make an organdy Madeira window pane. This is a wonderful technique called Organdy Madeira Window Pane. As you can see, this magnificent table runner that we have for this show, and the technique that is Organdy Madeira Window Pane is right here. And you can see there's a piece of Organdy that has been inserted behind this wonderful little triangular shape. It has machine embroidery in the middle and pin stitching on either side. And actually, this, this is a double row of um, a feather stitch, one in yellow and one in blue on the outside edge. Now let's just see how easy it is to make this Madeira organdy window pane or organdy Madeira window pane. First of all, I use in the bobbin only a water soluble basting thread. Now to make this little window part, we have to make the little finished window, we're going to trace the window the little diamond shape on half of the fabric only and then fold it in half. As you can see, that's what we've done here. Let me put it back in here. We'll pretend like we haven't cut that out yet. Now that around using the Madeira, the wash away basting thread, I'm going to straight stitch around this section right here and then I'm going to cut out the center and then clip the three points. Clip right here, clip right here, and right here. Now, as you can see here, I've turned it right side out. And here is where you use spray starch and an iron. I spray starch and press, not a steam, but just press it dry. Spray starch and press until it is bone dry. And then I'm going to, let me slip over here and get this off the board. After I have spray starched and pressed, if it is bone dry and I've done my job right, I'm going to go pull, 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 pull and it opens up and as you can see, it has a wonderful, perfect window that is already open. That's where we call it the window part. Now then, I've, I've fixed my window. Let me get my little stick back here. The next step I'm going to do is to slip the piece of organdy in behind this window. Therefore, I have the organdy that's peeking through this finished Madeira window. Now the next step is to stitch the first stitch which goes around the edge, but before I stitch, I need to put next a piece of a tearaway stabilizer. Okay, I'm going to use a pin stitch and I'm going to stitch all the way around attaching the organdy to the window pane. So I stitch all the way around and then I have one more final set of stitching to do. I'm going to come out a little bit over a quarter of an inch and using the pin stitch again or the Madeira applique stitch, I'm going to stitch the second row all the way around there and then of course I will go to the back and I will trim away the organdy and I've already pulled away the wash, uh, tear away stabilizer and I will trim the organdy and that is how you get the organdy Madeira window panes. Next, I would like to share with you how to do Madeira motifs, which is another one of the beautiful techniques on this wonderful table runner. This Madeira motif is absolutely beautiful on the table runner. The Madeira motif part is this beautiful yellow linen part that has the kind of a triangular shape, a little bit of a rounded triangle, that has this wonderful machine embroidery in the middle. Now this motif is made in a very interesting way and that's what I'd like to share with you now. The first thing you do is get two pieces of fabric. Now, here we go. I've got, I've got fabric that's matching. This is blue. I used yellow on the table runner. Two pieces of blue fabric. Once again, I'm going to use the wash away water soluble basting thread and I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside edge, stitching those two pieces of fabric together like I've done here. Using the water soluble basting thread, I've stitched both of them together. The next step will be to trim all the way around the outside edge 
as you can see, and clip the, and clip the little points there. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to the back and slice in, kind, in, in four directions because I've got to get in here and turn it right side out. After I have sliced in four directions, I'll turn it right side out, making a really pretty triangular shape here. And here I have it all turned right side out. Now the next step, after I've made sure that the points are really pretty, is to spray starch and press with a dry iron. Do not use steam. I have my steam turned off. Spray starch and press and spray starch and press. The spray starch dissolves the water-soluble basting thread and the pressing gets it really dry. Now after I have spray starched and pressed, I'm going to pull these two pieces apart and it will go pop, 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 just like we did before on the organdy Madeira window pane. I will pull the whole thing apart and throw this piece away. Now, as you can see, I have a wonderful piece of Madeira with all the edges turned underneath. And at that point, I will attach it to my fabric, and now I'm ready to stitch all the way around it. I'm going to use, by the way, do put stabilizer underneath it. I have wash away stabilizer. I'm going to, excuse me, tear away stabilizer. I'm going to use the Madeira, the beautiful Madeira applique stitch, or pin stitch, or point de Paris stitch, it's sometimes called. And I am using a wing needle, but I will share with you that you might want to use a 100 regular needle if you want a little bit more delicate look, because a lot of people do like to make this a little bit more delicate than a wing needle. The choice, of course, is yours. But I do love this Madeira stitch. I have my holes of the stitch on the fabric and the little uh, fingers go in and grab my Madeira piece. And now then, let me bring this back one more time so you can see how beautiful this is after it is finished. This is my Madeira motif, this beautiful yellow piece, which has been placed right in the middle of the lace shaping on the white linen. And now I have our last technique on this wonderful table runner today. It's Magic Madeira Border. You are going to love this Magic Madeira border around this beautiful, beautiful table runner. The Ma Magic Madeira border is this beautiful yellow part that goes all the way around the table runner. It's absolutely an easy technique. Once again, I'm going to use the wash away basting thread method to get that beautiful Madeira border. Water soluble basting thread, and I'm going to trace off the whole border. As you can see, here are my corners. This is just a little miniature one, of course. Now, after I trace off the whole border, I'll fold it in half because I own, I'm going to work with just half. Then I'm going to straight stitch all the way around the outside of the whole border. We're using water soluble basting thread in the bobbin. Then I will cut away the inside portion clipping at all the curves, and next I turn it right side out where it looks really pretty. I press in all these points and make them just perfect. Then I spray starch and press, spray starch and press with a dry iron. I want it to be completely dry, and then let's take it off after I've spray starched and pressed. Now what the spray starch does, it dissolves the wash away basting thread. After I have made it completely dry and completely wet with the spray starch, completely dry again, look what happens. I'm going to pull, and it's gonna go pop, 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 pop. Let me finish pulling this. I will pull it again and it pops apart, and then as you can see, I have the Magic Madeira border to go on my table runner. This one's a little square when my table runner was long, was rectangular. Now then, I place the right side of the border to the wrong side of the base. You see, this is the, that's my little seam allowance right there. And then be sure you remove the wash away basting thread before you sew your border to your base fabric. Then I straight stitch all the way around once again, I turn it right side out, and as you can see now, I have the correct side of my base fabric, and now this is a beautiful Madeira fabric. And then after I go turn it right side out, I'm gonna use my Madeira applique stitch, and I'm gonna stitch the two together, and that is absolutely all there is to making. Let me pull this border up here one more time and show you how beautiful it is. That is all there is to making this beautiful border to go around the table runner. And now we have a section of sewing, especially for kids, called So Cool for Kids.
for the So Cool for Kids sewing segment. I'm so happy to welcome my daughter Joanna. Joanna, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Today, kids, I'm going to show you how to make an adorable pair of blue jeans for your 18-inch doll. First, you take the pattern and cut the blue jeans out. Next, you take your two pieces of material, fold it in half, right sides together. Next, you're going to simply turn it this way. You're going to simply straight stitch the crotch, the front crotch, and then you're going to zigzag like I have done already for you. Next, you're going to open your blue jeans up and you are simply going to straight stitch a fake placket on your blue jeans. Next, you're going to fold your blue jeans back together, right sides together, and we are going to sew the back crotch. You just, you probably want to pin it, but I'm just gonna, do you have some pins? You know what I do, hang on just one minute. There you go. That's Thank good. you. Uh -huh. Kind of pin it to hold it together. Line the edges up and we are going to straight stitch. The fun part about this project is that the kids really can do it. Oh yes, all it is is straight stitch and zigzag, the whole entire project. And that's why we designed these doll clothes <laughs> that kids can really make. These are not doll clothes that moms are going to need to make. That's these right. These are doll clothes for kids to make. Uh huh. Straight stitch. And after you straight stitch, you are going to zigzag it, but I'm not going to zigzag, I'm just going to okay. tell you for time's sake. All you do is just zigzag it. To finish the to finish the. That's right. And after you have done that, now it is time to do the bottom of the pants. You see here I have just simply zigzag the edges. Then after you zigzag the edges, you're going to fold it over a half of an inch and straight stitch so you make a cuff. And so here it is, it's a raw edge, zigzagged. I'm going to fold it over, right sides together. Excuse me, I'm sorry, wrong sides together. Half of an inch, and then all I'm going to do is simply straight stitch. After you have done the bottom of the pants, it is time to make the legs. So, let me show you with this one. You put the legs together, you've got to match the top of the crotch to the bottom of the leg. Then you're going to pin, and once you have pinned, you're going to simply sew, starting from the bottom of the pants, you're going to straight stitch all the way to the tip of the crotch, and Open I'll go legs. ahead and sew all the way around to the other side. Let me go ahead and sew that so you'll see the full effect. And just sew it. All I'm doing is a simple straight stitch all the way down. And your pants are almost finished. That's all you almost have to do now finished. Is do your almost finished. That's elastic right. Elastic in the top, and you're nearly uh -huh. finished. Next, you just then you zigzag it again, and now it's time to do the elastic. All you do is I'll take this one again. You're going to fold it over an eighth of an inch, straight stitch. Fold it over a half of an inch. And we're going to zigzag it. The then we're going to run the elastic through. We've got to make sure you sew the elastic together, pull it, and straight stitch it, and then turn it back inside out, and you've got your pants. And you know what, Joanna? All those little girls that love to sew for their 18-inch dolls will enjoy well, making I themselves. So uh -huh. They can do it themselves. They can, they don't then, need it. all by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and next we have a kids' embroidery section for you so kids don't go away.
kids, we have an embroidery lesson especially for you. And I'm happy to welcome as my guest, Claudia Newton. Claudia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. I enjoy doing this. What we're going to look at today is a fly stitch, and we're going to use it to make stars on a doorknob hanger. This is what it looks like when I'm finished with it. It's just two coasters laced together with ribbon, a little bit of stuffing in between. So let me show you how to make fly stitch. The first thing you do is that you will have a template like this, and you'll trace the design onto your fabric, and it has a space left here so that you can put your name in there if you'd like to. You can embroider it, or you can put it on with a permanent pin of some sort that won't wash out or bleed on your fabric. When you're ready to stitch, you'll have your fabric in a hoop, with your threaded needle, I want to just make a fly stitch first and then I'll show you how to turn them into a star. We're going to make a U on the fabric and then stitch it down to make a point in it like a V. So what you do is come up on one side of the U, curve the thread on the fabric like a U, go in at the other top side of the U, and come out at the bottom where the bottom of a U would be, pull the needle through so that the needle is over the loop of thread, and when you do that, it makes a point at the bottom like a V. Then to anchor that stitch down so it won't flop around, stick the needle through, take it to the back, and that finishes your first fly stitch. To make a star, we make five of those in a circle. So what we do is to come up at the point on the star, make your U, go in at the next point on the star, you come out, at the inside point on the star, make sure the needle stays above that thread again, pull it down, stick the needle to the back, and it's finished. Now turn it a little bit, come out in that same hole that you just finished in, go to the next point, bring it out on the inside point, make sure the needle stays above the thread, and pull it through that way, Take that one to the back. Then you turn it. Remember to come out again in that same point. Then you move to the next needle point. Bring the needle out in the middle. Take the needle to the back. And you can see that if you continue, I've made three points. And if you finish all the way around, you make a five-pointed star out of a fly stitch. Oh, Claudia, that's such a fun project. Thank <laughs> you so very much for sharing that. And kids, this is embroidery for you to do and embroidery that you can do. Now, won't you come along with me to my attic? One of the most fun things about buying these antique clothes is that I can really put them on my grandbabies. This beautiful christening dress my grandson Robert Chase Jr. is wearing. And this christening dress is about 100 years old. And I'm sure it looked just as beautiful on the baby it was made for as it does on my little grandson who loves to jump, by the way. You see the way the dress is made down the front? It has the, different, it has the panel that comes all the way down the front. It has beautiful Swiss embroidery. And we have a jumping baby in this dress. Do you see how different the styles were on Christine dresses? This dress is about 1880, circa 1880, and they had little short sleeves and a scoop neckline. Mm. They were about 36 to 40 inches long, depending on, I guess, how much fabric the mama had. And this has Swiss embroidery, lots of pretty tucks, and is absolutely beautiful. It's just as pretty today as it was more than 100 years ago. Baby Chase, thank you so much for coming to the show today. I think he likes being on television. I want to tell all of you how much I've enjoyed having you in my sewing room today. And Chase, I'm glad you came to the sewing room today too. And you know, this is all the fun of sewing to me, or just most of the fun, is making beautiful clothes for the ones that we love. And that's really, <laughs> yes darling, that's really what an heirloom is, making something for somebody we love. Thank you again for coming to the sewing room today. And I'd like to invite you back next time.